I have seen so many patients with cardiovascular disease and diabetes, and, and I would actually lump them almost in a similar category because one leads to the other and vice versa. They're, they're quite commonly intertwined, and especially diabetes leading into cardiovascular disease. Uh, diabetes is a main cause of cardiovascular disease. But the, the point, the important thing that spans both of them, that's perhaps a theme in my practice, is inflammation because you can have a person with extraordinarily high cholesterol and that person can live their whole life with no cardiovascular disease, with no stroke, no heart attack. And then you can have somebody who has ostensibly normal cholesterol who has a massive heart attack. So we know that cholesterol is not a very good marker of disease risk. So what else is? Cholesterol makes up the, a, a component of um, what creates the disease, but it's not a marker for the disease. So why? What's the link there? Inflammation comes in because with inflammation there's injury. And so if we think about the blood vessel as this nice enclosed tube, and you've got all this cholesterol or you've got all these platelets, you've got all of these things that should be benign, that shouldn't be hurting someone and then you have an injury to what's called the endothelium. So that's the, the cells of the blood vessel. And that injury can be caused by high sugars, right? So sugars create advanced glycation end products. So they, they change the, the red blood cells themselves so that there's these little pokey spiky things that stick off of them. And those pokey spiky things injure the blood vessel. Um, or there are other inflammations in the body that that have these high circulating cytokines, so these chemicals that damage the blood vessel. And with that damage, we initiate a, a cascade of, uh, of cellular stickiness, right? The platelets get activated. The, the site of the injury itself is where the platelets will aggregate, so they come together and the platelets are very sticky. So then the cholesterol sticks to them and the calcium sticks to them and slowly but surely a plaque forms. And the plaque is what hardens the arteries. And so we now have the start of cardiovascular disease. And if that process continues for a long time, then we can have unstable plaques. And those unstable plaques can let go and create pulmonary emboli, they can create stroke, they can create heart attack, um, and of course, those are the bad guys. Those are the ones we want to avoid. So I guess the point of this is that focusing solely on cholesterol is not gonna help. Focusing solely on calcium even is not gonna help. We need to focus on reducing the injury in the blood vessel itself so that we're not getting the formation of the plaques. And that's really about reducing inflammation, and that's really about reducing our risks, right? So getting blood sugars down into normal ranges, so we're not getting that excessive advanced glycation end products. Keeping um, uric acid levels down, so uric acid of course is a cause of gout, and um, uric acid is, it makes these crystalline shards in the blood vessels. It's literally like little crystals gouging and, and damaging and injuring blood vessels. So managing all of these um, seemingly unconnected conditions is really, really important for managing cardiovascular disease.